Today we're discussing two of the most pretentious sounding topics in musical theater, concept musicals and Sondheim. But really we're talking about the biggest change in musical theater storytelling since Oklahoma. Hi, I'm Sarah and this is The Musical Show. And I'm actually super excited to be talking about Stephen Sondheim and his musical company. Composer and lyricist Stephen Sondheim has written more than 400 songs for musical theater, including songs for more than a dozen shows. His hits include Sweeney Todd, Into the Woods, and more. He also wrote the lyrics for West Side Story to go with Leonard Bernstein's music. And yeah, he's got kind of an intense cult following. On his birthday every year, fans celebrate with Sondheimus, a silly birthday party at the Broadway Supper Club 54 Below. 54 Below jokingly refers to the event as the annual quasi-religious celebration of the birth of the savior of musical theater. Some people hate his music. Historian Richard Kislin doesn't officially take sides, but he does say that Sondheim's music isn't always pleasant to listen to. To quote Kislin, it engages the air, but seldom caresses it. But whether you love him or hate him, Sondheim brought something new to musical theater. Historian Larry Stemple calls him the leading musical dramatist in the American theater of his generation. In 1943, Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical Oklahoma became known as an integrated musical because it combined the different elements of musical theater to tell a single story. In 1970, Sondheim's musical Company became known as a concept musical because it used those same elements of musical theater to talk about a single topic, in this case, marriage. Concept musicals look at the topic from different points of view. Stemple says, the effect is kaleidoscopic. It gives the sense of circling around a subject rather than moving forward along a storyline. Here's what the show is about. Bobby is hashtag forever alone. His 10 good and crazy, his words, married friends, want him to find a bay to keep him company. The story returns over and over again to Bobby's surprise 35th birthday party. In between the party scenes are scenes with Bobby and each of the married couples or each of his three girlfriends. Often, concept musicals are styled after reviews or a collection of songs and scenes, but about a single topic. There is usually a plot arc in concept musicals, but audiences don't follow lots of plot twists and turns to get there. So in Company, after a lot of discussions with his friends, Bobby eventually commits to finding a life partner. When writing Company, Stephen Sondheim said he quickly realized that he couldn't use the integrated musical standard format of having characters sing when they feel extra emotional. In his words, Company book writer George First's characters, quote, do not sing. Company's characters are all jaded New Yorkers, so they're way too cynical to burst out into song. Instead, the songs in most concert musicals, Company included, comment on what's happening in the story. Sometimes a song ends the scene. So in the number Drive a Person Crazy, Bobby's telling his married friend about each of the three girls he's been seeing. Then the scene freezes, and the three girlfriends come out to sing about how Bobby can't commit. Side note, it's amazing. You could drive a person buggy. You could blow a person's fool. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. First you make a person feel all huggy. While you make her feel a fool. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Sometimes, the songs are scenes all to themselves. There's not getting married, where a character has a so uncomfortable, it's hilarious, nervous breakdown on stage, all about how she's not going to get married today, before she does, in fact, get married. Pardon me, is everybody there? Because if everybody's there, I want to thank you all for coming to the wedding. I'd appreciate your going even more. I mean, you must have lots of better things to do and not a word of it to Paul. Remember, Paul, you know the man I'm going to marry, but I'm not because I wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as he is. Company but isn't your all. traditional optimistic musical love story. In fact, its leading man isn't even sure that marriage is worth it. The show demonstrates how married people and people living in crowded cities can still feel desperately alone. By showing the difficulties and dark sides of marriage and city life, Company turned musical theater on its head. It asks the rich, metropolitan Broadway audiences to question their own life choices. Sondheim has said that he hopes audiences would sit for two hours screaming their heads off with laughter and then go home and not be able to sleep. Stemple describes the original Broadway set of Company as a plexiglass jungle gym. Boris Aronson's set consisted of a series of raised metal platforms and two elevators. Aronson was also a pioneer in using projections. During scenes set in Central Park, silhouettes of trees were projected onto the steel backgrounds. Aronson was a pioneer in many ways. He was born in Kiev and immigrated to America after learning from the Russian Experimental School of Design. His sets perfectly embodied the moods of his shows, whether he's designing for I Do, I Do, Fiddler on the Roof, or Cabaret. 
For Cabaret, he designed a giant mirror that would reflect the audience from atop the stage. Now, a mirror of that size dangling above the actors could have been incredibly dangerous. So instead of using glass, he designed the mirror out of lightweight mylar. Aronson not only earned six Tony Awards, he designed the interiors of two synagogues, authored books, painted and sculpted. How's that for a legacy? If you're still a little confused about what a concept musical is, never fear. The best way to learn is to see an example in play. If there isn't a live production near you, you can check out one of the wonderful recorded productions of the show. You can also ask yourself these questions to figure out if a show is a concept musical. One, does the show share different perspectives on one topic rather than follow a character's plot arc? Two, does it feature a single change rather than a complex chronological plot? Three, do the songs comment directly on the story, where a character steps away from the action of the show to tell the audience what's going on? Four, are the characters the types of people who would not normally sing, so that when they sing it feels artificial? Five, was it written after 1947? Allegro and Love Life were the first concept musicals. If a show meets one or more of these criteria, it's probably a concept musical. What questions do you still have about concept musicals, company, or Sondheim? Are any of your favorite shows concept musicals? And what do you think about the device of Mr. Sondheim? Let us know. Oh, it's just about his Tony Awards now. I love Aaronson so much, he's the best.